also worked with Malcolm Douglas and Gray Larson. Right, do you play their music on your I, I show? booked Metamora here many, oh, many times. Oh, yeah, ago. they were great friends. When I moved to Cincinnati to go to college from Cleveland, I, um, I saw a sign on a telephone pole for contra dancing, and musicians were welcome, and they were there. Um, well, Gray was in college at Oberlin, but they were on and off. Uh, he was there, and Malcolm put it together, and uh, he was also instrumental in getting some grant money. And we played on the city buses, and parties, and weddings, and bars. And what, did you have a band with Malcolm? Well, it was a conglomeration of musicians who did the contra dances, which are the old English dancing. And um, so anybody who could make the gig, you know, we all just arranged it that way. Um, now he's, a, he's, well Malcolm is a hammer dulcimer player. Right. And he would take that on the bus? Yes. And people were shocked when we'd ride the whole bus line. <laughs> this is back in the 80s. Uh -huh. uh, and and Gray, Gray plays an incredible collection of flutes. And, uh, flutes and, and violin. And violin. Right. Yeah. He does old timey the Hardanger fiddle. Oh, that's so great. So. That's, that's, to me, that's pretty intimidating. Those are pretty intense musicians. Oh, they're wonderful. And back then, of course, it, they were very gracious. Uh, the, the music scene in Cincinnati at the time uh, was very big for Irish music. There were a lot of Irish bars and some really old um, Michael uh, J. Kennedy, if you remember. I don't remember him. Oh, he was a, a squeeze box player and um, he was from Ireland, one of the original wow. people that came to Cincinnati to work on the railroad. And Gr Malcolm and Gray, especially Gray, spent a lot of time with him and recording him. And I, uh, so I played with him. He was he was a friend. So it was a wonderful time. So are you are you in other bands? Are you? you well, I have been in bands. So I moved away from Cincinnati, went back, and I've I even lived in Tampa for a while and played with some local musicians there. Just even did some contra dances there and. So just dabbled in it, uh, really, uh, and then I had taken some time off, and the Trina got in touch with me. Back into <laughs> she that? found yeah. Trina found me uh, <laughs> last summer and on Facebook, and I uh, <coughs> said, "Yeah, let's try it." You know, I haven't played in a while, so uh, we've been having some good times. She's going to do some recording. Trina's got a mm -hmm. computer set up now and a really nice mini studio in her really? house. Very so. nice. So the Cincinnati, oh, look for the Cincinnati nice. radio band CD coming out soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ted, you're going to record with yep. Trina up in, up in Ohio? I, put, I made a few tracks down. Trina's real picky, though. There's a lot of tapes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this radio, this station, from when I was on the radio, Mike, things have really changed. No, I mean, I, I used to spin vinyl, cue it up <laughs> like that, carts, the cartridges and that. And I don't know whether I can tell this story. I think you'll like it. I was, when I first started out, I was in a public radio station called WAIF, WAIF, mm -hmm. in Cincinnati. It was not like this, it was alternative radio. And I had a little bluegrass country show on there, and they didn't have a restroom <laughs> in the studio. <laughs> That's great. And I used to say, uh, WAIF, coming at you from towers high atop the Hotel Arms, right here in Cincinnati, Ohio, just a little dinky, you know. So, I, um, well, I had to do number, I had to go to the bathroom, number one. Okay. So I put a long, which you would probably do too, you put a long LP on. Sure. At the beginning, let it go 30 minutes or how. And That's I knew that. I knew, <laughs> next, I knew next door there was a, a um, McDonald's. Okay. And I could go there. So I went there. I see you're hungry too. I wasn't, I, I didn't have that much time. I, maybe 20 minutes now. By the okay. time. And so I got back to the station. <laughs> oh no, the door's locked. Locked <laughs> out. So I'm like, well, maybe I got 15 minutes left. Luckily, the other uh, the other programmer, we called them programmers back then, you know, he got, or he was early. He let me in. Whew, thank God. Okay, so I walked back in the studio. Nothing coming through the monitors except. Click, 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 click. All six listeners that I had, oh, no. I probably called in because the lights were just lit up. They must have thought I had a stroke or, or just quit or got mad or what. And so I just gave it a little nudge and went on. I didn't get fired because they can't fire you from 
alternative radio. No <laughs> so there was no fallout? Did, did your manager say anything? There was no manager. <laughs> <laughs> this was alternative radio. If you wanted to go in and broad, I was I had one called Ted's Talking Book where I read kids' stories over there. You could do it. If you had an idea, you could do it. I guess it was a, it was community owned. It was very small. It was nothing like this, and it's still there. Mm -hmm. Well, well okay. So well, I, I have a funny feeling WLRN was like that some 70 years ago. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> now you're showing my age again. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's great. And, and so you're in Miami and you you don't do radio anymore, obviously. And you do. No, it would be fun, though. Well, now that I know that you leave to go to McDonald's and the bathroom, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -oh. that's true. <laughs> I'm not the person. But to that's tell a true it. story. I mean, that was, you know. Uh, Ted Reddington is uh, playing guitar. We have Trina em em Emig, Emig. Emig on, uh, on banjo. She's the 2016 banjo babe and on mandolin. <laughs> Jim Huey on dobro. Jim Gobb on bass. And also Laura Hassock on violin. Let's add one more tune. Oh, and also I want to mention you're at Luna Star Cafe this evening. Uh, playing your third gig together, <laughs> seven thirty, six thirty, and nine thirty. So Sunday, it's not going to be a late night. Well, Jim, did I ask? Did, did I ask you, Ted, what what band you were in? Only one that I started in Cincinnati called Ted Reddington and the Ready Tones. Um, Jim here was a Ready Tone, and we played the Ground Round Circuit. If you remember Ground Round restaurants, <laughs> I don't know if they were up there, but it was all the way from Lexington, Kentucky, up to Dayton, Ohio. And a bunch of other little gigs. I can't remember any other real band that I was in except the one that that I started. So the Black Star Mountain the Boys. Black Star, Black Star Mountain. Mountain Boys played <laughs> at a place called Aunt Maudie's Country Garden, a cut and shoot place down on 12th and Main Street in Cincinnati. You, you don't want to go there, but a lot of college kids did go down there just to. Is there any place? So when you're down here in Miami now, you live down here now, right? And the only time you play music is when the band comes down. I practiced an awful lot. Okay. I mean, because <laughs> Ask his I neighbors. Knew, I, I, yeah, <laughs> I knew we had this gig, but basically what we did was rehearse by email. I'd send something, they'd practice. Or, or well, you, you don't want a solo career doing open mics and that kind of thing. I think I'm good enough. Could I do that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You have to ask your bandmates. Oh, okay. Trina. Well, then it's not saying anything. Oh, so. okay. <laughs> I'm pretty entertaining <laughs> on my own. I don't know about you guys. Maybe. Are we fine? Yeah. Sit on a stool. You can MC. Here's Jim Gobb to sing one. Uh, Jim, what are you going to sing? T for Texas. T for Texas. Oh, that's a Jimmy Rogers. That's a rocker. Ready? Tennessee. 